Hello, everyone. I'm Zane, and today I will talk about Percival, an in-browser, deep learning-powered perceptual ad blocker. This is a joint work between UC Davis, University of Oxford, Brave Software, Imperial College London, and Bouncer Technologies. Modern web pages contain content from multiple domains. To monetize free content, a publisher, such as New York Times, reserves space in their web page for content from other domains, such as ad networks. When a user visits a publisher website, the publisher sends the content along with ad tags embedded in the page. These ad tags will then request ad content from ad networks. This ad space can also be sold to another party via the ad network, where the ad network, instead of delivering the ad content, delivers more ad tags, which link to a different ad network, in this case, ad network two. This is known as ad syndication. So why would anyone want to block ads? Well, intrusive ads affect user experience and performance on edge devices, since ad content takes a lot of time to load. Ads generally take up a lot of real estate on web page and consist of dynamic content like images, animations, etc., which impact visual accessibility and performance of web page, particularly on lightweight computers and mobile phones. Attackers use ad distribution channels, described before, to hijack compromised web pages in order to trick users into downloading malware. This is known as malvertising. Ad networks also embed code in the web pages to identify the same users again in a different domain creating a more global view of the user browsing behavior. Fortunately, there are ad blockers like Adblock Plus, Brave, Opera, etc. However, existing ad blocking solutions use filter lists like EasyList to block ads. These lists are manually created and crowdsourced, meaning volunteers report websites with ads and then developers write rules corresponding to the user reporting. Typically, when a user visits a website, the ad blockers examine the content and the ad tags from the publisher to look for blacklisted domains like the adnetwork.com. And then block the subsequent HTTP request to this domain. Additionally, ad blockers also hide the HTML elements and block script execution. However, filterless-based blocking techniques can be broken by changing the domain URL or the page metadata of the, of the ad posts, which is used by ad blockers to identify ad elements. Second, existing research has shown that these filter lists are not efficient and contain a lot of old unmatched rules. And third, due to the manual effort needed, updating the rules takes a lot of time. In an attempt to find a more flexible solution, researchers propose perceptual ad blocking that looks at the content of the ad and not the markup. Perceptual ad blockers examine the web page content from the user's perspective. This is because the intended audience for the advertisements are humans and not the browser. There is a semantic gap between the code that gets sent to the browser and how the browser interprets it. What the user sees is the interpretation of the code and, and also known as the rendered content. And this is why perceptual ad blockers operate on the rendered content and not on the metadata. However, existing perceptual ad blockers also fall short. Some only look at high level features in ad images like text or ad choices logo. Others are prohibitively large and slow for production deployment, while others only work at the extension layer. To this end, we present Percival a deep learning powered in-browser perceptual ad blocker that examines the entire ad and non-ad content, which could be images, animations, videos, etc., with convolutional neural networks to filter ad content. All the visual content in the web page goes through Percival first before the user sees it. Percival blocks all the visual content that it thinks contains ads. From the browser's perspective, Percival runs in the rendering engine of the browser. The rendering engine has a number of stages and I'll describe these stages in detail later on in the presentation. But the high level idea is that Percival runs in one of the sub stages of the rendering engine. 
the job of the rendering engine is to convert all the code obtained from the network to content on the screen. And as the rendering engine decodes the visual content, Percival intercepts it and blocks the ad content. In the remainder of the presentation, I will first talk about some of the challenges of running deep learning in the browser. I will talk about Percival design principles next. This will be followed by the actual design and I'll talk about the evaluation after that. That will be followed by a demo of Percival and afterwards I will conclude. Deep convolutional neural networks can beat humans on computer vision tasks like image classification. This chart represents decrease in error rates over time with newer models on, on ImageNet, which is a collection of over 14 million images belonging to over 20,000 classes. The y-axis is the error rate and the x-axis is the year. It can be seen that with deep learning, the error rate decreased significantly in 2012. And after 2015, with ResNet, DeepCNN started outperforming humans on this image classification task. However, these models are of the orders of hundreds of megabytes. That is almost three to four times the size of the entire browser executable. The number of parameters also roughly translates to the increase in latency, which makes these models impractical on resource constrained devices, unless you have custom hardware like TPUs or GPUs, uh, and you can reliably use it. The inference time of these models can also be of the order of hundreds of milliseconds on high-end CPUs, making a practical deployment of these models prohibitively slow. So in order to run deep learning inference in the browser, we need smaller and faster models, but smaller models mean, means lower machine learning capacity and hence lower accuracy. So we need to maintain this size latency versus accuracy trade-off. Additionally, all the visual content must go through the CNN since there's no way for us to know ahead of time what is ad content and what is regular content. So if all the content goes through the CNN, then the model inference is in the critical rendering path. And then the challenge is how to keep the browser responsive. To address the aforementioned concerns and to make Percival practical, we adhere to the following principles. We run Percival natively in the browser for performance reasons. We identify a choke point in the browser. Uh, we identify a choke point for most of the visual content in the rendering engine and run Percival at this choke point. We run multiple instances of Percival in parallel. This is to mimic batch processing in a, batch, in a machine learning inference since we can't delay inference until a batch of images is available. We have to run inference as soon as the first image is available. Finally, we ensure our machine learning models run fast and are efficient and small. To understand where Percival runs in the browser, here's an overview of some of the relevant browser components. Overall, the browser consists of two processes, the browser process and the renderer process. Each process has a main thread and an IO thread. The IO threads are responsible for network requests and IPC. And the main thread of the browser process is responsible for updating the UI, whereas the main thread of the renderer process runs Blink, which is the uh, Chromium rendering engine. From a high level, Blink's job is to turn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript into pixels on screen in order to render content that is part of the web page. In this processing pipeline, the first stage is parsing HTML tags to create the object model of the page or the DOM tree. When the DOM tree is built, Blink processes the style sheets. After creating the DOM and parsing the style sheets, Blink computes the coordinates of the regions the web page elements will occupy on the screen. This is known as the layout phase. This is followed by other stages such as paint, which records paint operations, say draw a rectangle in a display item. Uh, and a display item is a visual representation of the page. The display items can have images in them, which need to be decoded first. So this is followed by the image decoding task. And this is finally followed by the rasterization task, which converts the display items, which is, as I said, are visual representations of the image uh, of the web page, and converts these display items into bitmaps. Note that the content is still in the memory and not on the screen. 
This is followed by some low-level primitives where Blink issues OpenGL calls through Skia, which is a graphics library that abstracts underlying hardware. And ultimately, we see pixels on the screen. We run Percival after the image decode task and during the raster task in this rendering pipeline. Percival intercepts every decoded image in the display items and blocks rendering of the images that it determines to be ads. This point in the rendering pipeline is the choke point for vast majority of the visual content. An exception to this would be if visual content is drawn programmatically using Canvas or SVG. So how do we run Percival in parallel? Well, the main thread in Blink creates many worker threads to decode multiple images in parallel. We run an instance of per a Percival in each of these worker threads. The model inference needs to be thread safe in order to do this. From the implementation side, Percival consists of a neural network trained externally in Python and an in-browser uh, C++ machine learning library. To keep our model small and fast, we start with SqueezeNet as our base network. We refine the network to remove some parameter heavy layers in order to keep the inference fast. More details of this are mentioned in the paper. For in-browser inference, we use a singleton design pattern where the model is loaded on the first invocation only and subsequent invocations just reuse the in-memory model. The model inference, as mentioned before, is thread safe. Given our focus on making perceptual ad blocking practical, we first evaluate the impact of Percival on the browser performance. We measure the impact of Percival on render time which is defined as the difference between the DOM complete and the DOM loading event timestamps. And we measured that Percival adds 4.5% or 178.23 milliseconds to the mean render time in Chromium on Alexa top 5,000 websites. Percival adds 19.07 uh, or 281.85 milliseconds overhead to the Brave browser on the same experiment. The graph to the right is the CDF of the render time. The y-axis is the percentage of pages. The x-axis is the render time in log scale. The dashed orange line corresponds to the stock chromium, and the blue line is the stock chromium with Percival. As can be seen, for chromium, the overhead is minor. The dotted red line is the Brave browser, and the dotted green is Brave with Percival. There's more overhead on Brave than stock chromium. To capture the uh, rendering and perceptual impact better, we created a micro benchmark with first meaningful paint. And first meaningful paint is defined as the time it takes for the browser to first display content on the user screen. We constructed a static HTML page with 100 images and then measured the first meaning meaningful paint in Chromium and Brave with and without Percival on the static page. Percival adds 120 milliseconds to Chromium and 140 milliseconds to Brave on this uh, static HTML page. So it takes 120 milliseconds more to render this page in Chromium with Percival activated. For accuracy purposes, we also conducted an in-browser evaluation of Percival on Facebook ads. So generally, Facebook displays ads on the right side column, as well as sponsored content embedded in the feed, which is shown in the center. Accordingly, we define true positives as the number of ads in the right side column or embedded in the feed that Percival correctly blocks. False positives are the number of images in the remaining web page that Percival correct incorrectly blocks. True negatives are the number of images rendered in the non-ad portion of the web page while false negatives are the number of ads that evade Percival. To evaluate these metrics, we browse Facebook for a period of 35 days, and Percival achieves an accuracy of 92% with a precision of 78.4% and a recall of 70% on Facebook ads, meaning that every time we make a blocking decision, it is correct close to 80% of the time, and we catch about 70% of the total ads. We also trained a custom user model, which achieved a precision of 88.04% and a recall of 97.25%. This was trained with ads served to one particular user. 
to evaluate whether Percival can generalize to other locales, we evaluated Percival on Arabic, Spanish, French, Korean, and Chinese languages. As can be seen from the table, Percival performs well on Arabic, Spanish, French languages. However, the results on Korean and Chinese are less accurate. Next, let's do a quick demo of Percival. So I'm actually running this per, uh, presentation in Percival. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna just do a simple Google query uh, advertisement. And it is expected that most of these images will have high ad intent. And as you can see, Percival blocks most of these images. However, if I were to do Barack Obama, you will see that it, it, it renders most of these images, obviously because these are of less ad intent. So how does it work on an actual website? You go to facebook.com. As you can see, it correctly blocked these two ads. Uh, as I said, the right, right side column ads. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna scroll down and this is some sponsored content and you can see it didn't block this image, but it blocked the image right next to it. And it blocked all the other images uh, within this uh, sponsored. And this is some regular stuff, which it didn't block. And this is some more sponsored content, which it blocks. This is non-sponsored, so it doesn't block that. This is some more sponsored content that it blocked. So you can see, uh, Percival can selectively pick ad content uh, from Facebook and other websites as well. All right, before I conclude, I quickly want to talk about adversarial attacks uh, against Percival. So recently, Tramer et al. showed that how state-of-the-art perceptual ad blockers, including Percival, are vulnerable to attacks. Uh, however, only one of the attacks mentioned in the paper actually evades Percival. Since Percival is deployed client-side, attackers have white box access to the model weights, and thus creating adversarial samples is trivial. To address this, we changed our deep learning model from SqueezeNet to MobileNet V2, and we retrained with the original data. It took us roughly nine minutes to get to our baseline accuracy, and the new model was able to correctly classify all the adversarial samples. It should be noted that we did not add any new data to train the updated model. In light of these observations, we argue that Percival is lightweight, actually smaller, than the average web page size currently, and hence can be updated regularly. However, we recognize that the aforementioned defenses, uh, or the aforementioned defense does not necessarily provide any theoretical guarantees uh, against adversarial evasion of Percival, since adversaries could craft samples that transfer across models. To address this, uh, Future research could potentially look at client-side training, where a model is trained based off of user feedback or self-feedback. This makes adversarial evasion harder since every user has a different copy of the model, which weakens the premise of the first order adversarial attack. Additionally, existing research on adversarial training has shown promise. In particular, Madri et al. demonstrate adversarial training that can provide security guarantees of robustness in a classifier. They cast adversarial training as a saddle point formulation. Since a saddle point has both maxima and minima, the maximization is used to find an adversarial sample that achieves high loss for the uh, given network, while the minimization is used to train uh, the network to minimize the adversarial loss corresponding to the maximization step. This is trained with a combination of gradient descent and ascent. To conclude, I first, first motivated why we need ad blocking and how existing ad blockers fall short. With Percival, we introduced deep learning into the rendering engine, which addresses some of the shortcomings of the current generation of the ad blockers. Percival has a minor impact on browser performance, can also block first party ads, and generalizes to other locales as well. 
with that, I conclude. And uh, uh, any questions are welcome. Please uh, send your questions to uh, the email address mentioned on the slide. Uh, thank you very much.